all right so yo my people yeah it's me just ja i've got my bro here right i've seen him on tiktok with his you know controversial if that's the right word i'm using you know stories and posts it is a very the way it comes across it's it's good man it's it's the truth and it's funny and and you know i really like and appreciate his stories my bro yeah. Sharky. so nice, nice to meet you, my brother, well, yeah. nice to see you thank you for coming on to my podcast and telling a little bit about you know your story and where it all like comes from so uh, yeah, yeah. first things first from my guests i like to ask like where do you come from originally parents from how you grew up school days stuff like that so i was born in bd7 my mom's from here I mean, old man's from back home he's, he's done uh, taxes all his life he's grafted hard so i lived in bd7 for maybe three four years and then the parents were like look if we keep him in bd7 there's a chance that he's gonna go down the wrong path you know maybe start selling narcotics you know start stealing cars stuff like that so they wanted to move me out of yeah. this area and take me to an area where they were a bit more sophisticated and they were had a high, high, high chance of you know like uh, living a life congruent to the teachings of the lord yeah so what happened is we moved to putsi when i was about four or five years old and i've just I've lived in putsi all my life right. like i say that ra being raised in that environment i honestly do believe helped me stay away from a path of crime yeah. i was always associated with people who were, who were on that life but i never indulged in it myself because yeah. of the way my parents raised me because of the area that they raised me in yeah so it helped me stay away from all of that so i think one of the best decisions my parents made were taking me out of bd7 so i love bd7 shout out <laughs> to all my bd7 boys yeah no hate <laughs> but the best decision my parents made were taking me out of bd7 at, at that young age and taking yeah. me to putsi right and so so what was you like in so your parents they you taught your dad was a taxi driver so very hard working yeah, man yeah, yeah, and, and did that te did he teach you a lot as well so when I used to see, see my dad, like he was leaving house early in the morning, coming yeah. back late at night, yeah. grafting, grafting, grafting. Yeah. Naturally, you see that as yeah. a young boy, you think, yo, my dad's a grafter, he's working hard, I want to do the same thing. Yeah. So I feel like, you know, sometimes people they follow the footsteps of the father in, in the wrong way. So yeah. You see your father, like, like I know people who, whose fathers are smoking, both dope, this and that, mm. alcoholics. Now they've gone into the same path. Yeah. So I feel grateful that, you know, I always, my, 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 my old man was always grafting, always working. So I've seen that. That's what, as a man, that's what I need to do. I need to provide yeah. for home, take care of the women and children under my care, like, just the same way my father did. Yeah. So I respect that, man. And um, what was your school days like? Uh, school was sick, man. Listen, <laughs> the school was sick. Like how you see me on TikTok. Yeah. Is how I was in school. I was yeah. like the, the class clown, but I want no. I want. I want like an idiot. Yeah. I was smart as well, so I got good grades. But I was. I was a class clown. So to, to everyone who went to school with me, listen, you're, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I made their life. I made their miserable existences. You yeah. know, I give them a break from their miserable existences. When they, when they come yeah. to school, they see me for six, seven hours, bro. That was the best six, seven hours of their of of, of their day when they went home. They went back yeah. to being sad and upset. So I feel like what I used to do in school now, I do online where I try, yeah. I did start a Sharky Therapy in high school where I'd start giving advice to people. Yeah. But I'd give it my own type of way where I'd, I'd give you a serious message, but I'd throw it in there with a bit of humor. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do on TikTok now as well. So school was sick, man. I was, like I say, I feel like for me, high school were, were unbelievable. I loved it. Yeah. Shout out what, to all my high school boys. What was the, the funniest thing that you've ever did in school or to someone? Can you remember or this, to give us oh, some... Uh, bro, there's so many different stories on top of my head. Uh, do you know, do you know what is it? Whenever what I did to someone else, it was always what I, what I would do it to myself. <laughs> so we'd be in class, man. Like, I don't know, man, we'd start wrestling in the classroom, taking yeah. tops off. Yeah. Imagine being in, like, we, we used to watch um, WWE yeah. back then. Yeah. So we were having WWE matches in, in ICT. Yeah. If you were in my ICT class in, in year 10 and 11, yeah. well, them classes were wild. The teacher would see us at the back of the class with our tops off, or chokes slamming each other. Yeah. So it, it would just, it would just, it would just like lads having fun, really. Yeah. I mean, they never really bullied anyone or put anyone's head in toilets or this or that. It would just, <laughs> it would just lads being lads with each other, in, you know, enjoying each other's company. Yeah. I was gonna say, but a quick question, yeah, before we go for what you were about wrestling, then, yeah? yeah, yeah. What do you think about grown men watching this Barbie film? <laughs> Listen, they need a backhand man only walloping. Listen, they've got a soppy pair of bollocks. If you're a grown man and you've gone to watch Barbie, understand you do not have an ounce of testosterone inside of you. You've got a soppy pair of bollocks and you've got a fragile mind. I'll meet you on BD7 right now, Great Road, and I'll give you a walloping. <laughs> I, just, I had to get your view on that. I had to I'll, get your view. Listen, when, when we were kids, yeah, yeah, the girls had Barbie dolls and the men had, had, had the action figures. Yeah. So how now is that same little boy becoming a grown man, got a wife and kids, and he's going to watch Barbie? Yeah. Do you know what I mean, bro? Yeah, I don't understand it myself. And he's, he's having kids, and his kids is, like I said, I, I see my dad working hard and everything, yeah? Yeah. This little boy seeing his dad going to watch Barbie. <laughs> what hope has that poor child got in his life when his dad's watching Barbie? Yeah, true.
Yeah. Well, are, you, are you on the Barbie thing? No, right? no, 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 no. I don't think so. I'm on the Barbie thing. I'm on the Barbie thing. I mean, I've got my daughter later on today, but that's I will different. not. I'm you know not, what? That's the, if yeah. you're taking your daughter there, bro, I respect that. Yeah. I thought, I'm on, if the men are taking the daughters to watch Barbie, bro, I respect that. Salute you. But if you're going yourself or with your boys, yeah. you know, that's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, all the man them rolling. Yeah, 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 bro. Suck that. Yeah. But if you're taking your daughter, bro, I hats off for you. Respect that, man. Yeah. Thank you, bro. So, as you're saying, you know, school days were good. You had a lot of fun. And so what, what happens after school for you, Sharky? What's what's going on? So, like I say, man, Alhamdulillah. How did you, you know, not get involved in the streets? Or, you know, when you said you're around, growing up around these yeah, yeah. negative people, like, gets so, through that. Do you know, like, like because well, when I left school, I was, what, 18, I did six form, graduated. I had no interest in going to uni. Eventually, yeah. I did go to uni and I graduated. Yeah. But uh, uh, when I was 18, I, I had, bro, as far back as I can remember, this, yeah. I, I wanted to be a gangster. That's a yeah. famous uh, saying from, yeah. from the movie uh, Goodfellas. Yeah. So as far back as I can remember, bro, that's all I wanted to be. Especially when, you, like, when you're growing up and the people around you are on that life. You, they were there, like my dad have to wake up in the morning, yeah. early to work, graft 12, 13, 14 hours, come back late at night. Yeah. And, I'm seeing, and he's driving, bro, a taxi. And I'm seeing a man wake up when they want to wake up. Go yeah. to bed when they want to go to sleep. Have the, uh, they're having the lunch break when they want it. They're living the life that they want to live. No one tells them anything. Yeah. And they're driving the supercars. So naturally, as a, as a kid growing up, 10, 12, 13, 14, as you get older, you're seeing that. You're like, yo, my dad grafting all these hours. Yeah. And then he's got that. Right. So, bro, then you're thinking, yo, then you, you'll be arguing with yourself. Yeah. Like, okay, my dad's doing that, and I want to copy him because he's hardworking. And then yeah. he's doing that, and my, my my own man will, will always say to me, yeah. look, you have to follow my footsteps. You can't go that way. But then naturally, you, you, you have the shit down inside here. Yeah. That plants, you know, plants his thoughts. Yeah. And he's saying, bro, listen, your dad works so hard and he makes X amount of money. This guy's working two, three hours a day and he's, make, he's making that. So yeah. I think my father knew I always had like a rogue side to me where I, I didn't want to go down that path. So that's why he did work so hard and he did try to try to show me that, look, as a man, you have to work hard. Yeah. And you have to, you have to go down this way. So, like, you, you know yourself as a local lad, but you're always going to get calls saying, look, I can put you on this. Yeah. I can put you on that. So, so after school when I was 18, bro, there, there were a guy I knew who, who were chopping up cars. So he goes to me, look, you're an honest guy, you're a good lad, you won't rip me for money. You come with me and start chopping cars. And then there was someone else who was saying, look, uh, you know, I can I can fire up a, a narcotics round for you. Yeah. You can start selling wood. Yeah. So I was like, all right, yeah, it sounds good on that. And, and then... And then, like, I was thinking about it. And even now to these days, as a grown man, bro, I woke up in the morning, I, I still think, shall, shall I accept that phone call and go rogue, or shall I shall stay on the path that I'm on? But my, my father would always say to me, as a Muslim, you believe that your your sustenance is predestined. So that's what we believe. Your rizq is written. What, what does that mean? So basically, whatever you're going to get in life, you're going to get regardless of what op occupation you are. Yeah, so All so right. basically, just, let's just say that the Lord's wrote in my life, I'm yeah. earning one million pounds. I'm going to earn that mill, whether I'm a security guard, whether I'm a boxer, whether I've got my own business, whether I sell drugs. So that was something that helped me stay away from it. Constantly drilled into me by my parents. You're only going to earn what the Lord's written for you. Like if he says, okay, if you sell drugs, you're going to earn a million pound more than what I've written for you. Okay, I don't understand it. But my dad would always say to me, look, you're only going to get what, what, what has been predestined for you. Yeah. Now, if you go down that way, then it's going to be haram money. You're going to have no, no blessing in it. And as quick as it comes, it's going to go. Yeah, and if you earn it in an honourable way, you'll, you'll have the Lord's blessing in it, and it lasts longer, and you'll feel better, and you feel content. So that was something that, was that helped me stay away from it. Even now to this day, well, sometimes I'll, I'll I'll be laying in my bed on the night, and I'll be like, Lord, please give me strength, man. People are ringing me saying you can make this amount of money in this short period of time. Yeah, can you please give me the strength of faith to understand that my rizq is written and to stay away from that? So like, I, I don't want to purport a fake image of myself where I'm some sort of gangster. Look, I've never spent a day on the road. I'm not a G, I'm not any of that, bro. I'm a normal law-abiding citizen, but I have opportunities to go down that path. And yeah. because of my Islamic faith and my upbringing, yeah. I stay away from it. Yeah. So that was the reason, man. But And what what do you think about, you know, real, like, real talk, what do you think about people that are like, out here and they're grafting and, and like then they're giving kids like a false sense of... Because look, you, you might see a guy driving down this road now in an RS3, yeah? yeah? But realistically, that car could be financed. It could be the boss's car. He could be three four boxes in debt he could have about 20 people wanting to kill him like they don't see yeah, that yeah. side of it so what do you think of like when they portray in the life like some of these worms where it's just yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just like fair enough the guys that are really doing it fair enough but then you've got these other guys that do you know what i'm saying so like I, they, they do sell young lads like a, like a false sense of the yeah, other, yeah, yeah. false dream so i would look at when i had elders around me who were in that life who would say to me who were very very close to me if you know me then you know yeah who would say to me look all you're going to see is the cars and the money. You yeah. don't see the enemies. You don't see the, the hey, yeah, your heads on a yeah. swivel. Uh, enemies are going to come take me out. A police are going to ram me off the road. Yeah. Uh, is, is my house going to get raided tonight? 
So I was alert to the harsh realities of that life. Yeah. I was alert that it's an illusion. All you have is, 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 is the money and the cars. You have the enemies, the police, and this and that. No peace. No, that's it, peace. That, yeah. That's what that's what you always said to me. There's no contentment in your heart. So I will look at that I had my parents, and then I had the people who were in that life who were saying to me, look, if you want to go down, it's your own choice. But yeah. be, be aware that what you see is not the realities of that life. So that really helped me stay away from it as well, man. So when, so that's like your teenage years, like 18, obviously you've finished uni and stuff, and that's what you're going through, you know, you're battling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to do that even to this day. But what happens then after that, like 20s? What, so, what's going uh, so I was at uni from, I think, 20 to 23. Yeah. I missed every single seminar and I missed every single lecture. Did you ever do any parties at all? No, you got any, no, any no, hidden I, secrets? I'll tell you what happened, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. So when I were, when I were in high school, like we have to pray five times a day as Muslims. So yeah. I, I, I'd be on and off. Sometimes I'd pray, pray five times. Sometimes I'd pray none. So like yeah. if, I, if I spent a week praying five times, the, 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 the boys would laugh at me. Yeah. They'd be like, listen, next week he'll be, he'll be missing his prayers again. So when I was about 20, 21, something happened in my life. I've never disclosed it with anyone. I don't think I ever will. It's between me and the Lord. Yeah. So I was basically taken to the depths of darkness. Yeah. I was in despair, bro. So I was like, I was like, I was lost. I had nowhere to go. And, uh, no one did could you, help did, me. Did you, did you uh, do a bird for the first time or something? No, like no, no, no. It was no, so bro, I, 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 I was down in the depths of darkness. Yeah, I was thinking, yo, what shall I do? So someone says to me that that, that we have this prayer uh, called the Hajjid. So basically, you wake up in the depth of the night before Fajr. And we believe the Lord descends to the lowest heaven at that time. Yeah. And if you make a dua at that time, it's like an arrow that you shoot an arrow and it hits its target, basically. Yeah. It's really powerful. So this person said to me, look, if you want your prayer to be accepted, you have to read your five prayers. You can't yeah. read the optional prayer and miss the ones that have been obligatory upon you. Yeah. So I went from praying zero times a day to five times a day for the last maybe seven, eight years now because of that, that like, that calamity that come upon me yeah so so that's what happened so i was at uni for them three years but i missed every lecture every seminar can't, can't we know what that is at all i, I can't man. I, I tried to speak about it but I, I can't, man. maybe it's a hidden trauma maybe it's holding you back <laughs> my, 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 tongue, yeah. my, my tongue's tied man yeah. I, I, maybe in the future but at this moment yeah. in time i just can't man yeah. if i do speak yeah. upon it i'll be, it'll be on your channel don't worry all right thank you bro. yeah yeah it'll be on your channel don't worry but at this moment in time now bro i, yeah. I, I, I can't I, I can't see what it was but oh no one knows only the yeah. lord knows so because of that I understand what it's like, bro, to feel lonely, to feel alone, to feel yeah. like rock bottom, yeah. feel no way out, yeah. feel what well, this is what we call like like se severe depression. Yeah. All of that, like I didn't want to go gym, I didn't want to go to work, I didn't want to. I was missing you and I, I was still training here and there. So I, but because of that, I sort of this is why I kind of do what I do now. Yeah. So I understand what what it's like to feel alone and to feel depressed, and I don't want other young men to go through feeling what I went through. Even though yeah. I had people around me it was my own fault, like, like I say now, yes. I, I struggle and open up. So I try to create a safe spot for for man to open up so they can see. You but know don't, don't you think real men open up? No, no, they, 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 <laughs> I do agree. So yeah. if, let's just say, yeah, if I've got, if if someone got a strong friend, yeah, I would advise him, listen, open up, tell him. Yeah. So when, I'll, I'll always say to people, look, try to find a, a, a God fearing, a masculine man to open up. It's very yeah. good to open up. The, the worst thing you can do is, is is to keep it inside yeah. you at the bottom. Yeah. But but the trouble is, you have to find someone who I believe is a God fearing, masculine man can advise you properly so yeah. you can give you advice from an islamic perspective as, a, as well as a masculine perspective. perspective yeah what happens is people will open up to worms so yeah. that worm will give him a, like a wormy advice but yeah. he's taking him further down into, into the into, 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 into depression so basically he'll get that information and and tell other people and take advantage of it yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. Uh, i have trust issues I, I don't trust anybody so i always think if i tell someone because he's his heart is in a graveyard full of secrets he can't conceal my secret. He's gonna tell next one. Yeah. Next one's gonna tell next man. He's gonna tell his own. His own is gonna tell before you know it. But oh, yeah. all my enemies know, know, yeah. know my weakness. So for me, I I just speak to the Lord personally. Yeah. But I do encourage men. Listen, that's why I tried to create create a safe spot where people can see me as yeah. as someone that can speak to, and I try to give them some advice in the right way. Yeah. But but what what I do say is this: I, I'll never go to my mum or any female in my family, or my or if I have kids in the future for advice ever. Whatever yeah. pain I have outside, I'll conceal from them. They'll never know. Yeah, because you get a lot of these guys that actually run home to the mums and tell the mums, and, and then the mums, like for me growing up, people's mums used to go to a police station for their sons and ring the police, and you know, like little things like that, or, yeah. or getting their mums to come out screaming on the street and fighting yeah, the yeah, battles. Like, yeah, yeah. Real men, your mum don't even need oh. to know. Like my mum, you could go see my mum now, she don't even know what I'm doing today, <laughs> yesterday, last week, week before, because I don't tell her, because it yeah, was yeah. stress her. Exactly. You know so, what I'm saying? If I said to my mum or mum, these guys are trying to kill me, 
One's gonna be like, oh, they might come to my house, they might do this, might be like, I don't wanna put my mum under that stress. Exactly. I'm gonna deal with that stress. And if they go to my mum's, then that's what my mum will know. But then obviously, it's 100%. different, isn't it? So, listen, like, I, I were I'm training and uh, have uh, you know, my quad muscle, I've torn it. So, yeah. my mum has become so stressed over a muscle on my leg. Yeah. <laughs> that's the nature of your mum. So, these mum are here, bro, they're getting robbed, they're getting raped, they're crashing the car. And because they can't handle, the, it's like, a, they can't handle that little bit of pain. Yeah. They go home and shift that, that temporary pain onto their mum eternally. Yeah. So, because they can't handle it, they can't conceal it from the ma. They'll go home, they tell the ma, yeah. I've been raped, I've been robbed, this has happened. Now, their mother can't sleep for the next few weeks, next yeah. few months, maybe the next year, bro. She's in her bed, talk, he sleeps peacefully now. Yeah. He's like, bro, I've told someone, it's, it's a burden off my chest. Mm. Now, his ma, however bad, however bad he felt, she would feel that pain a million times worse because yeah. that, that's the nature of a mother. So, I always say to lads, bro, when you come to your door, you smile and leave your pain outside. Do yeah. not tell your mother your pain. Like, if, you, if you're going through something, ask someone to pray for you because the prayers are powerful, but don't give her the details of it. She won't sleep, bro. That's the nature of a mother. Yeah, 100%, man. And what was so for you now? Yeah, what was you doing? So, did you ever have any honeys in college or what was going on in uni? Did you ever? I still got honeys now. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 what about you? Do you have like, do you ever have a first honey that you ever fell in love with or all like that? Yeah, yeah give, listen. Give us a secret, man. Give yeah, yeah, go on. Listen, yeah, yeah. Listen, many, 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 many years ago, there was one honey. There was one uh, who I did love with all my heart. Yeah. But uh, she's uh, she's in the past, and the past is no concern of mine. Like a shark, <laughs> I'm, all, I'm always swimming forward. That's the best but, way, bro. That's the best. Listen, yeah. do you know what it is, bro? When you leave a honey's life, I always tell people, or she breaks up with you, your heart's gonna bleed, but you have to handle it like a G. So what yeah. I say is, look, I love you with all my heart, but take care, baby, and. Uh, have a good life and that's it move on yeah and now she sees that message yeah take i love you take care of it take care baby have a good life and i'll never respond ever again now i'm etched into her heart and mind for eternity yeah bro do you know what i mean so if you're sending her a paragraph bro she's gonna move away from you yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. this is some advice for you worms when your honey breaks up with you you say take care baby have a good life and never open a message ever again never respond to it ever again now for eternity you are the only man who she ever broke up with who just who just bounced he did not care so that's how you have to handle it, like a G, man. Yeah, man, I like it. It hurts, though. Yeah. I listen, I, I honestly believe a man loves a honey much more than a honey he loves a man. Yeah. See, the honeys will, will watch this and be like, I, I uh, disagree. But that's because the men you choose are worms. If you choose a, a gentleman, a good God-fearing man, a G like me, <laughs> or like Jar, you yeah. understand, bro? Like, because, because men love uh, unconditionally. Yeah, you're right, man. But they love upon condition. Yeah. So when they leave us, our hearts bleed. And naturally, they have a lot more options than what, a man does. What do you think about honeys that cheat on men? Ah, treacherous, bro. <laughs> Haram. Where, do, where are the stones, man? Where are the stones? It's treacherous. Do you know why? Listen, I'm not an advocate for cheating, yeah? I'm not condoning cheating. Mm. And as a Muslim man, obviously in Islam, cheating's wrong. Yeah. However, the way a man's mind is programmed, a man can cheat and no feelings involved. It's just extra click activity. For example, I can be with a honey, yeah? Provide for her, love her, die for her on the spot if armed intruders broke in, make her the mother of my kids. Yeah. There could be another honey there that I don't care about and I could dismantle her cervix. <laughs> I shouldn't even say that. Dismantle her cervix, yeah? But she means nothing. Yeah. You get me, bro? She means nothing to me. I still love her with all my heart, but a woman yeah. is incapable of doing that. If a woman cheats on you, her heart is cold to you. She doesn't have an ounce of love in her heart for you. So obviously, in the yeah. eyes of the Lord, when yeah. a man cheats and a woman cheats, it's the same. Islam yeah. is fair. Man's not fair. Islam's fair. But I believe it's much worse when a honey cheats because, bro, she doesn't have no feelings for you no more. And yeah. a man takes it much worse. Yeah. It's deep, that shit. Bro, very deep, man, bro. I, oh my, bro, it hurts my soul. It hurts my... One thing I, I, I always say to a man, if you're talking to a woman with the knowledge that she's married, I don't care how pretty her eyes are, I don't care if she's got the best pair of melons in England, bro, <laughs> you stop speaking to her, your lust cannot supersede your honour because how can you, for the sake of a 10-second buzz, condemn your fellow man to misery for the rest of his existence? So that's what's going to happen, bro. You won't, yeah. If you're a married man and someone, someone do something with your wife, bro, you're going to feel that for the rest of your existence. Yeah. So I always say to a man, bro, your honour has to supersede your lust every single time. You have to think tactical. There's plenty of single honeys out here. Yeah, too many honeys, man. What do you think What do you think about, basically, when um, you've got these men and their honeys are like, they've got like... You know everything on shore, and and the man's just cool with that. Like the titties are out, the fucking, you know what I'm saying? Lip fillers in, and and haram. <laughs> <laughs> the youth, man. Do you know what is yeah? Again, so a, a man knows how a man's mind's programmed. Yeah, when we yeah. look at a woman normally, the the majority of men, unless he's a good God fearing man, and even him, he'll have moments of uh, weakness. Uh, when 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 a man looks at a woman naturally, he looks even if she's got everything covered up, he he'll, he'll see something that pleases his eye. 
So I don't understand, especially as a Muslim man, yeah? How does a Muslim man put his wife on the internet knowing that men are disgusting and lustful and vulgar? For, so he puts his wife on the internet for, for, for other men to lust over, and he knows how sick men are, how deprived these men are, they can't get on worms. They'll screenshot his wife, they'll zoom in onto, onto a bit that, that's, that's night, bro, this is it. This is serious, but I have men who, who say this to me. No, 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 no. Me. I was lying so, to me. So, so you, you worms upload your wife, yeah? You give direct exclusive footage to these worms to screenshot your wife, go to his bathroom and tickle his strudel over your wife. Where is the honour in that, bro? I should wallop you all. And then you're going to have children, yeah? Your daughter's going to see you posting his... Uh, posting your wife now how is she gonna have higher how is she gonna have modest there if you have no, no modest there over your honor do you know what i mean bro like you need to understand bro that you're you're gonna affect future generations because i have unmatched plus pakasa eh? i see how you uploading your wife affects your kids and affects the future of islam because bro when you're uploading your wife your daughter's gonna see that your son's gonna see that now your son has no protective jealousy eh, over women mm. so when he gets married he's like yo my father did that so it's the norm, mm. and as a Muslim man, bro, it's not the norm. So like, I, I always online, I always say I'm married, then I'm not married. I've got four wives. So like, no one will, will ever know. Yeah. But if I actually, if I am married, boy, no man would ever know because there's federal psychopaths on the internet, and I would never ever put my wife on there for these sick, twisted worms to tickle the strudels over, man. I, I don't get it, me. I don't know. What, what, what do you think on it? No, 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 bro. I totally agree with you, bro. Like, she, she shouldn't be posting your wife and letting man do that. But um, what else I'm gonna ask you? Yeah, is like, so how do you feel a woman should be treated? How should us as men treat women? Now, I've got a daughter, and obviously, I'd like her to maybe hear this little part one day. You, what, what do you think? Do you know what it is, bro? I'm a, I'm a huge ambassador and advocate for men taking care of women and children because I've seen it to people who are very, very close to my women who are married but, but, but they feel like single mothers or women who have been left by rubbish men. So, I've seen how women in the Pakistani community have been treated very badly very harsh like physical abuse financial abuse mental abuse so it's something it's a topic that's very close to my heart because there's a lot of women who are love and care for who are dying on the spot to protect who i've seen you know they get abused by men but well, i believe it's a man's duty to provide and protect for women Listen, i don't care how bad you're feeling how depressed you are you need to go out and earn money for your for your women and children i know now it's hard because of how they, they're trying to make it where you know both partners have to work but i believe a man should bust his balls so much that the women and children under his care are fine. You know, the food's taken care of, the clothes are taken care of, all the necessities are taken care of. So that's the financial side. Then you have to understand that a woman is created completely differently to a man. Bro, she's first less, she, she's more emotional, yeah? Then she has a ketchup, then she she, she, she she has a pregnancy, then she'll give birth. After birth, she might put some weight on. So she's thinking, yo, I'll put weight on. So natural, and they deal with things in a much more emotional way than men so you have to be emotionally intelligent to to, to be able to to deal with a, with a woman's emotional in, 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 instability yeah so you, you have to be very very patient with, with a woman sometimes a man will come home from work and his, his missus or his mum will say look oh blah blah this and that this he's doing that and he's doing and he flips her he needs to bro have that emotional intelligence to be like okay no problem i'll take care of it like i'm whatever you know what you know a woman also wants to hear from a man is i'll take care of it yeah. whether it's your mum your honey or your daughter also wants to hear is don't worry i'll take care of it and i believe a man should be there financially emotionally bro even like physically if it's your wife you, you know be intimate with her you know you gotta fulfill her needs as well yeah. stuff like that man so you have to be very soft i don't believe him like you know when i advise women it's not in a harsh way i don't say wear that scarf on or you're not going there you're not going you're not doing this you're not doing that so a lot of muslim men They'll be harsh with the women, but a woman's created differently. So I can say to a man, listen, you soppy bollocks, you little worm, go down and do some press-ups. Because he's a man, it's different, but with, yeah. with, with a woman. I say, look, my dear sister, you are you are a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Lord loves you so much, you have no idea how much the Lord loves you. Yeah. Bro, I'm saying to you as a Muslim brother, because I care for you and I love you, please don't go to that place. Or please, you know, put the scarf on a little bit better. Or please don't upload that type of content. you yeah. got to be so soft with him. you got to yeah. advise him in a completely different way, man. So I believe man yeah. has to be very soft with women. I, I seen uh, my, my mate said the other day on a, a podcast that you can G check your wife as well, isn't it? Like yeah, yeah, as yeah. a man as well, because yeah, you are still a man. So you have to like be able to just tell them. But what do you think about the other way around? Like men that like, do all the fucking you know like the badness and that like what do you mean that, banging yeah. about yeah. ten honeys and got fucking two, three wives and <laughs> it's one of them ones, isn't it? Listen, I have to give my I have to I have to, I have to give the the perspective from Islam first, yeah? Yeah. So obviously Islamically when a man cheats on his wife, 
Yeah. But that's that's a major sin, bro. Major sin. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, from an Islamic point of view, bro, you you have a duty to, to the Lord. Yeah. And then you have a duty to your wife. The Lord has trusted you to take care of her and yeah. to be faithful to her. So as a Muslim man, if if I'm saying it from a point of Islam, yeah. you have to be loyal to that woman. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna get a second and third wife, you have to go back the, the, you know, the right way. Hundred percent. There's yeah. no wrong with having a second and third wife. And a lot of women out here, they make it out though. It's a sin to get a second and third wife. Yeah. Listen, I'm gonna have four wives and fifty kids, inshallah. <laughs> There's no wrong with that. And as long as you've got you, as long as you've gone down that path the right yeah. way, unless you say I know people who the honeys at home, yeah. She cooks, she cleans, feeds the kids, and he's out, bro, taking some random honey on holiday. This and that. I believe that's wrong. Because yeah. why are you not taking the mother of your kids on holiday? You're yeah. taking some local Instagram on her yeah. on holiday, and she's getting rassed out by 15 different, uh, different men in the year. Yeah. I, I believe that's wrong. 15 men in a week, bro. That's what I'm saying. So I believe that's yeah. wrong. I mean, if you've got a good, good fitting honey at home, <laughs> yeah. take her on holiday, bro. Yeah. So, But I, look, I, I understand how hard it is to stay loyal to one woman. Yeah. I get that. So, <laughs> see, a lot of people think when you get married, a veil comes over your eyes and your heart. Yeah. And you're close to your heart's close to every other woman. It don't work yeah. like that, bro. You're still gonna have temptations. 100%, but now, yeah. so before marriage, you had, a, you had a duty to God to stay away yeah. from that. But now you're married, you have a duty to you, to God, and you you have a duty to your wife yeah. to stay away from that. So, so let me ask you a question. Yeah, moving a little bit forward. Yeah. So why why are you still single, man? What's going on? Why 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 you got no wife yet? Maybe I'm married, bro. I would, I would, if I were married, I would never disclose yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, true. You just said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if I'm not married, yeah. if I am single. Yeah. yeah, bro. The the, the there is good honeys out here, yeah? yeah. But maybe my standards are incredibly high. Maybe this honey who I was who yeah. I was who the, I had a the modern the modern day honeys are not for you. I see, listen, I don't want to say that there's no good honeys about. Yeah. Because there is, and I believe good honeys are for good men. So maybe the type of man yeah. I am attracts the type of honeys that are coming into my life. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. if I become a better man, uh, you know, the, the Lord will send me a, uh, like a better standard of honeys. Yeah. But do you know what? It is? Like if I'm talking to a honey, yeah. And she mentioned as a Muslim, and she mentions her ex, bro. I'm gone, never to be seen again. Yeah. Well, well, how are you mentioning your ex to me? You to be, if the Lord's concealed your sin from me, why are you telling me about it? Maybe, maybe you're not doing it good enough for her, so she's still thinking about him. What do you think? <laughs> but this is like, yeah, maybe, yeah. But do you know, like, right, right at the start of the conversation, yeah. So the first few days of just chatting, I'm not yeah. interested in her, bro. She popped up to me, yeah. I don't pop up the honeys one day, pop up to me. So <laughs> <laughs> they're, all, they're all the agents of the Matrix, I yeah. trust none of them, yeah. all lust no trust out here, yeah. Uh, so, bro, they'll pop up to you and then they'll be like, they'll mention the X man. And as I don't like that because my mind automatically goes to, well, she's had a cervix dismantled. <laughs> that's what I think, right or wrong. That's yeah, what I yeah, think. Yeah. And I get put off, man. Yeah, yeah. So I'll be like, bro. I destroyed my exes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying, bro. So I'll be like, yo, bro, I know a guy. Both yeah, friends. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy, yeah. He got married. He spent yeah. 40 G's on his wedding. Yeah. The next day, so they they consummated their, their, their wedding night. Yeah. Intimacy, obviously. She woke up the next day and goes, you know what, bro? I won't feel in that. I, I, I want to leave. I want to get a divorce. Yeah. Because her ex was, was dismantling, it dif dismantling it differently. Yeah. 30 positions in 30 seconds, all of that. So this guy couldn't do that. Do you know what I mean? So, bro, uh, is, is, to marry a woman who's had yeah. a past is difficult because it affects her. And there's even statistics to show that when a woman's had, had intimate partners, her chance of a happy marriage goes from 80% to like 25%. Yeah. Because they compare each and every experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I say, obviously, the, the, there's a little story I want to mention just very quickly because uh, I know a lot, a lot of lads that you want virgins. Look, there's a story in Islam, yeah? There was a man who got married and his wife was pregnant from zina, sex outside of marriage with, with someone else. So what he did was he concealed her sin. He, he, he kept her locked in the house. So when she gave birth, he took the baby and then he went to the mosque at the, at the time of uh, Fajr, the morning prayer. But he, he, he went in late. So the Jama'at already started. He put the baby at, at, the, at the, the, the back of the masjid, left the baby there. The Jama'at started, finished. Everyone saying, look, whose is this baby? So what he said is, look, me and my wife will, will are trying for a child. We can't have one. I, I, I will adopt this child. So he concealed his wife's sin. He concealed his wife's shortcomings. He, he blended it like that, that. That was a random baby. And he took, so because he concealed her sin and he forgave her sin for the sake of the Lord, he gained companionship with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in paradise. So I know sometimes I say, look, we all want virgin, this and that. Yeah. But if a woman has fallen into sin and she has repented and she's genuinely left that, that man's out of her heart, out of her life, you know, you as a Muslim man can forgive her for the sake of the Lord and inshallah, you will gain a similar reward to that one. So that's something that I do try to put there because a woman, yeah. there's, there's women out here that are great women that have yeah. fallen into something. They thought they were going to marry the guy. It can happen. She's genuinely a good woman. 
Yeah. So I don't want to just because a woman's lost her virginity, I don't mean she's yeah. you know she's she's unmarriable or so that's just something I want I wanted to put out there, man. Yeah, man. So Sharky, uh, again, so we will get back to you like more. So obviously, like, what happens when you get to how old are you now? I, I never disclose it on the All internet. Right, don't disclose, but I'll let, tell you afterwards. When you get a little bit older, yeah, like, yeah. is there any more like situations that happen in your life? Because like, you, you know what it is, man. Like, maybe three, four years ago, my personal family went through very hard times financially, bro. I'm on about my mum was sleeping on a mattress for four years. Bro, we had we plastered the walls. We had no paint. We had no sofas, bro. We, the house was a wreck. Bro, people would come to the house, and <laughs> if uh, some people would laugh, bro, so how are these man living? And so some people w- would uh, would be like, "Yo, I feel sorry for you." You know, work hard and save up. So for four years, bro, imagine seeing your mum on a mattress for four years. It's yeah. difficult. I know you've been through your own things in life and stuff like that. But a lot of people out here uh, or may have may have had them or, or may not have. So for me, as a man who who's saying I want to take care of my mum, I want to take care of home, I want to take care of the women and children under my care. We had to, the whole house was ruined, bro. Let me tell you, there were no carpets on the stairs. There were no bed, no beds, bro, no wardrobes, no nothing. We went through very hard financial times. So again, now I've got the choice of uh, like Shaitan saying to me, bro, look, look at your mum sleeping on a mattress. If you go that way and you earn that money, you can fix the house quick for your mum. So anyway, I would, uh, I, I, I was struggling with that. So what I chose to do instead was, bro, I, I did bro, 12 hour shifts every day, 40, 50 days in a row. Waking up at five in the morning, grafting six till six, then I'll have boxing seven till eight, going home, and then sleeping, waking up again, bro. That, that was my life until I fixed the house for my ma. So you had to graft hard and sit and do that for your ma. Was, was, you, was your dad still around? Yeah, my dad was not around as well, but like sometimes, bro, your dad's can fall on hard financial yeah. times as well. You get me, bro? Because he, yeah. he's only one man. Yeah. He's got bills. I don't pay no bills at home. He pays the bills. Yeah. He does this, he does that, maintenance, everything. You get me, bro? So sometimes, I, like in life, you, you, can have, you can have moments where you're comfortable with money. And then yeah. the Lord's gonna test you. Do you feel like it was that's what I'm saying? You feel like it was a big test? A big test, man, because like so because when you have no money and you, you have no carpets and man are coming to your house and laughing, bro, you're thinking, yo, if I just go rogue now, I accept that phone call, I can make 20, 30 grand and I can fix the house. Or if I go down the legit way and I work working for nine pounds fifty an hour, you get me, bro, then it's gonna yeah. take me time. Yeah. But I, so I had the choice between it's gonna take your time, but you're doing it the right way, it's gonna last, it's halal, it's making you happy, it's making your heart happy, it's making you content, you've got peace of mind, you're not worrying about police, you're not looking over your 100%. shoulder, your mum's happy because she knows you're working hard to put the carpets in the house and everything. You get me, bro. You know, so you, know what, you have to be bro, proud of yourself. If it weren't for my mum, bro, I swear to God, I believe I, I believe I would be in jail. I swear to God, you know why she yeah. says to me? She goes, Look, I would rather die of starvation during this throughout my life, especially during this very hard period of four or five years. She goes, Look. I understand your nature is is uh, is rogue. You, you know you have contacts to go down that life, and I know you want to go down it because you want to fix the house for me. She goes, look, I would rather sleep on a mattress for the rest of my existence. I would rather have no carpets and no wardrobes. I would rather die of starvation than accept a single penny if you if you earn it in that way. She goes, I'm not going to accept it. So when my mum's there, bro, struggling, no bed, no nothing, sleeping on a mattress, and she's saying to me, I'm not going to accept a penny in that way. Then how can I earn it? You yeah. get me? I only wanted to earn that money from my ma. So I thought, I'll let you know what. I'll, I'll, I'll go down this route, like you said, peace, content, whatever. It feels good that I worked hard for it. So that's what I did, man. So like I say... So can I ask you a question? Sorry to interrupt you. So do you know, when, do you, know when you take when people take uh, drug money home to their families or even if they wash that money through a fucking, I don't know, a business, yeah, yeah. and then take it home, but it's still come from the streets, yeah. you know, destroying hundreds of lives. What is that not is that not counted as uh, good money or no, how that, does it work? That, 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 In <laughs> Islam, how does that work? Islamic that's haram yeah. money. If you've earned haram money, bro, you, 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 even if you give that money in charity, you'll be questioned for it. it, 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 it I, was, I was watching a speech, and he goes, to, it's like giving haram money in charity is the same as trying to clean your, clean your clothes with urine. With urine. So it's like peeing on your own clothes. So, <laughs> do you get what I mean? So, yeah. But the scholars of Islam have to have to create that message, have to say, look, don't give haram money in charity, so it keeps people away from it. Yeah. Obviously, Allah is most merciful and most forgiving. He can accept it. But they have to say that so people stay away from it. But yeah. we believe if you earn haram money, whether you've opened up a business with that or whatever, you, like that business isn't, isn't haram. You have to source of it has to be halal right from the beginning. Halal from the yeah, room. yeah, yeah. You can't clean your money and that's halal. No, it don't work like that. Right. Otherwise, I'd be doing that. Everyone would be doing that. You get me? Yeah. So it's got to be halal from the beginning. Wow. So that's how it is, man. What else, Sharky, goes on in your life, man? Have you got anything you want to get out of your, you know your what, story? Do you know what it is like? For me, do you know what it is? I feel like a lot of people are just all they want is the accumulation of wealth, and I understand that. Yeah, people want to. Mm. I want to do that as well. You want to level up in life and take mm. care of your family, holidays for your family, this and that. But I feel like people only care for their own financial gain. 
where mm. I feel like, look, I know how many men are lonely, sad and depressed, but I'm only one man. How many videos can I create? How many videos can you create? How yeah. many people re- re- realistically can we reach? Yeah. You get me? So I want more men out there to start making videos, start putting positive messages out there, have brotherhood, yeah. camaraderie, you know what I mean? Helping your fellow man. Because yeah. there's so many men out here that are sad, depressed, lonely. Bro, you know the harsh realities of life as a man. Mm. You know how difficult it is, how lonely it is. So yeah. we need, do you know when I make a video on X amount of people pop up to me? And then imagine all them people who made videos, how, much, how many people they could reach. Yeah. So I feel like that's what I want, want to get out there. Yes, yeah, so you, want, you want more men to be more strong and just put the videos out, talk about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's okay to talk, basically, that yeah, kind yeah, of thing, yeah. yeah. And for me, look, I want to tell people, similar to you, look, yeah, like even right now to this day, yeah, I might look fresh, yeah, whatever, yeah, shaved up, whatever. Fly, man. But the thing is, yeah, I still go through hard times, like every day is, like, I need to pay my, my cameraman, my editor, yeah. whatever, yeah, like I go through times where, you know, my mum still rings me, like, I need this, I need that. It's only me, like you're saying. Yeah. And no matter all the struggles I've got in my personal life, you know, I've got a daughter I need to provide. I want to take her here at six weeks holidays. I want to do this. I need to travel here. I need to do this. And you can, if I let all these things get to me, yeah, I've got this person talking shit about me, that person talking shit, 100 negative comments. If I let all this get to me, then I could be like Sharky saying, down and depressed, yeah. But I will never in my whole entire life let that get to me. And another big thing is, I'm not Muslim, yeah. but I keep faith in it. Yeah, and like yeah. you're saying, I pray, yeah, yeah and I keep that, that, that keep that strong faith. And that's what you need to do, you know, to to achieve anything and to get out of any dark hole. I'd say, yeah, have faith, have belief, and have a burning desire and belief in yourself as well, yeah. And don't like like you're saying as well. Don't dwell too much into the past, yeah. If it didn't happen yesterday. Just have hope it's gonna happen today, it's gonna to happen tomorrow, yeah. And just stay focused, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't just don't let none of this like worldly things get to you. You know, if you're not selling drugs, if you're not a big drug dealer, if you're not like you're saying you're taking nine pounds fifty an hour, so what man, you not know. Now, bro. The, 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 <laughs> no, not now, but back then, <laughs> back then yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so 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 but at the end of the day though, you're still getting what you need yeah, to get done, done, yeah, 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 You're getting it, the carpet, you're making your mum happy, awesome. she's not on a mattress, she's in a bed. That's you know yeah, what I'm saying? Awesome, like yeah. it's progression, it's slow progression, like Rome won't built in a day in it. And that that's that's all I've got to say there, man. Something else I want to say about that, like so you know, because there's a lot of lads who are down in the press. So the advice they get given is have a day off, stay in bed. The worst thing that you can do as a man when you're feeling down is stay in bed. Now you're overplaying every scenario in your mind, you, you're wriggling around in bed like a worm. But the only way to, to, to beat depression is speed, conquest. When a man's yeah. on conquest, he's got goals to, ta- to, to smash, he's got targets to achieve, he's, 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 he's got things he wants to do. You, you, can, you, you, you can outwork, you can, you can out, uh, outrun depression. If you're constantly moving, you constantly got goals, targets, stuff like that, bro. Yeah. You, 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 you got no time to be depressed. Keep moving, stay busy. Like a shark, bro. Sharks are always moving forward. A shark can't swim backwards. You can't look yeah. backwards, bro. It's always moving forward. That's why I, I love sharks. Yeah. Well, Is that why you're a sharky therapist? <laughs> shark, bro, I love the shark, man, because it's, a shark is a creature that like he spends a lot of time alone by yeah. itself. He's not scared. He, he, he yeah. relies upon itself. Yeah. So I like the shark, man. And when I was 10 years old, I had a fight with the shark. I walloped it. <laughs> uh, I, the sharky, man. Bro, I don't know if you can zoom in and see that with the scars there, man. Yeah. I survived the shark, didn't. So like I say, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people, when they're depressed, they, they get told, Oh, it's okay. Have a day off this and that. Yeah. I believe that is the worst advice you can give to a man. I say, yeah. go to the gym. Use that pain and suffering to smash out reps in the gym. Yeah. Go for a run. Turn your pain into power. So, the other day, uh, 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 someone messaged me. He goes, "Oh, I'm feeling down. Uh, can you come with me to so? Because I I I, I, I want to go outside for a jog and uh, I, I I need the the oxygen." So I'm like, "Bro, you, you know what you need to do, yeah? You've just said to me you need to go outside for a run." You need the oxygen. Why are you waiting for some man to come and save you and drag you out of bed? Grab all these soppy pair of bollocks, put on your running trainers, go out and run. And because my flexor superiority, he, he can't keep up with me. Yeah. So how's he asking me as a prime athlete, yeah, that runs five, <laughs> six miles a day to go jogging with him when he'll have a cardiac arrest after 100 yards? So this is the message to, to the men out there. Yeah. No one's coming to save you. You have to save yourself. You know them soppy pair of bollocks, bro, and that feeble mind of yours. You have to forge your mind in the iron. You have to forge your soppy, your soppy pair of bollocks in the iron. No one's coming to save you, job, bro. You have to save yourself. Yeah, 100%. Like, bro, man is saying to me, I'm addicted to watching Indecency Online five hours a day. Yeah. What does he want me to do? I will go there and put him in an arm bar for five hours so he can't tickle himself. Bro, I can't do that. I can, all I can say to you is, yeah, is uh, when you're feeling like that, just uh, turn the cold tap on, get your strudel, put it under the cold tap. It, it diminishes the, 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 the lust inside you or something. Or put on your screensaver, God is watching. You know, don't be isolated in your room. 
I can, I can only give you advice. I can't come to you. I can't implement this stuff into your I'm life. I'm definitely not watching porn no more. I'm sure you've got hidden cameras on me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, bro, I, that's the message I get the most. Yeah. Bro, from young lads, yeah. grown men, married men, that's the, I get, that's the message I get the most. I'm addicted to watching indecency. When I'm at work, yeah, yeah. there's lads who are 40, 50 years old. Would their wife to be watching it? Yeah. I'm like, bro, you're not having intimacy yourself with her. You want to sleep with your wife in three, four months. Why are you watching indecency with her? Yeah. Because obviously, we're, we're, as a Muslim, we're Oh, not, they watch you with your wife. Yeah, they watch. He sat there with his wife. Shit. He's tickling himself. She's tickling herself. They're not tickling each other. They're watching two two people on the screen they're doing back with someone another. And I'm saying it's wrong. Let's yeah. know it's normal. Yeah. I'm saying, bro, shook up to Allah that I'm Muslim, bro, because yeah. I'm not allowed to, to be doing stuff like that. Yeah. They're like, no, nah, no, nah, it's normal. So I'm thinking, bro, the the, the Western the, the degeneracy yeah. has infiltrated your mind, bro. And I'm just yeah. happy that I'm on the path of trying to trying to be on the path of righteousness. Yeah. Obviously, I have rogue tendencies as well. Yeah. But I believe that there's a clear path between the war between righteousness and this uh, Western degeneracy. There's a war on a, on, on a, a religion, and I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Is no, it is, it is, it is, it is, man. The world's fucked up in it with all well, that in it. Listen, do you know what's what going on with kids and all that in schools and shit? That's it. They're trying to infiltrate the minds of children. Bro, do you know what they, yeah. they say? They say there's freedom of, of speech, yeah? But there's not. Yeah. There's only freedom of, of what we allow you to speak. Yeah. There was a rugby player called Israel Folu. You look and Google him. So he, he, uh, he's a, He's, he's a Christian, God fearing, yeah. So he quoted a verse in the Bible saying that all fornicators, gays, gamblers, blah blah blah, are gonna go to hell. So he lost his contract because he said that people of the rainbow are going to hell. So if I, as a Muslim, quote something from the Quran regarding that same thing, that's my religious belief. Belief, I have freedom of, of religious expression. Am I gonna lose my job for that? But bro, we're fucking, I think we covered a lot there. Yeah, man. We, co- nice we covered here. a lot. We're yeah. definitely, definitely, we're gonna have a part two. Yeah, definitely. When um, obviously you're a multi millionaire <laughs> and uh, I'm a multi millionaire, we'll definitely um, have a lot more to talk about then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I only mess up, bro. You know, is I appreciate you coming on because you know I always listen to you in it. Yeah, yeah. I listen yeah, to you speak and I agree with a lot of things you say. You know, yeah, sometimes yeah. you might come across in the wrong way, but I understand the point you try to make. And that's why I wanted you just to come on and hopefully I can help push your message yeah, a little that. bit. You know what I'm saying, bro? As like, much as I can push it, I'm going to push like it. Like you say, sometimes I, I do correct my message yeah. in a rogue way where it does upset people. You know, yeah. I, I'm a professional. I'll watch this back. I'll see where bits where, yeah. you know, I could have uh, created it a bit better. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm trying to do, bro. I'm on the constant path of, path of self-improvement. Yeah. Trying to, like, just to finish off, bro, yeah? Yeah, no, no. I, you take your time. I've got, got, got a catchphrase. Bro, I, just for you lot who don't know who I am, bro. Sharky therapy, yeah? keeping it 100 from the womb to the tomb. I'm active from the AM to the PM to the AM. I'm saving souls, conquering earth, honey rejecting, J2O sipping, all round, nice guy, top lad, gentleman, lady killer. Just have to get that out there, bro. <laughs> I have to give myself the proper introduction. Should yeah, have that at the start. Yeah, right. But my bro, then, I appreciate you coming no, on. No, no, thank you. Again, beautiful yeah. talking to you, man. Nice thank meeting you. Man, you. Man, no, very good chat. So listen, it's just yeah. jar. Negative to positive. Keep watching, you know. Stay tuned. Like, share, subscribe. And yeah, peace out, blessed.